Russia seems to have planned another war crime, with murders and shootings, as in Bucha, during the invasion of its troops into the Kiev region in 2022, according to Oboz Revitel media outlet. However, the Russian terrorists plan to commit these atrocities on their own territory in the Kursk region and then attribute everything to the alleged armed forces of Ukraine. The FSB is preparing to implement such a scenario, while the Kremlin's accomplices are already warming up the information space for this. Thus, after the unexpected Ukrainian offensive on Russian territory, the Kremlin began to prepare an informational counter-attack, the purpose of which is to falsify crimes and accuse the Ukrainian armed forces of them. According to some sources, Ukrainian military intelligence knows that Moscow has a script that is already being partially implemented. Abbas Revitel says, in particular, the FSB is trying to stage scenes that will allow the Russian Federation to claim that events similar to Bucha or Srebrenica took place in the Kursk region, but allegedly with the participation of Ukrainian fighters. That is, Russian war criminals intend to repeat everything they did in the Kyiv region during the occupation at the beginning of the full-scale invasion in 2022, but more globally. This time, the Russian Special Services plan is complex and has many components. One of the propaganda elements in this operation is the statement by the Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova about alleged Ukrainian concentration camps in the Kursk region. An even more cynical statement was made by the international criminal, the so-called Human Rights Commissioner of the Russian Federation, Tatyana Moskalkovka. She claimed that the Ukrainian armed forces are committing war crimes in the Kursk region. On September the 23rd, the propagandists organized a whole press conference at Ria Novosti where they presented a report of the International Public Tribunal on the crimes of Ukrainian neo-Nazists in which systematic evidence of atrocities by Ukraine in the Kursk region was allegedly voiced for the first time. The author of this report was Maxim Grigoriev, who is called in the Russian media the head of the public tribunal and a member of the public chamber of the Russian Federation. In addition to implement its scenario, the aggressor plans to gather part of the population of Kursk region and conscripts of the Russian army, subject them to torture, commit violence against women and children. It is possible that the Russians are ready to torture their compatriots to death, everything as in the Bucha massacre. And then, as in the case of the terrorist attack in Elenovka, where the occupiers killed dozens of Ukrainian defenders after the place of tragedy and atrocities of the armed forces of Ukraine is ready, Russian and invited foreign media, as well as diplomats, will arrive there who will spread this false information around the world. It is possible that, to enhance the effect, the Kremlin may even present several captured Ukrainian soldiers processed by Russian propaganda so that they confirm these horrors in order to press harder on emotions, especially those of Ukraine's partners, Oboz Revitel says. What is worst of all, this may be just a part of the large-scale criminal plan of the Russia which it is preparing to implement after the Ukrainian armed forces leave the Kursk region. Russia could deploy 200 to 300 different types of weapons to target Ukrainian nuclear power plants. Ukrainian expert Ole Katkov said this. Regarding Russia's capabilities and stockpiles of weapons, if the Russians do attack Ukrainian nuclear power plants, it will be a highly concentrated attack. Obviously, it will likely not be a strike on the power units themselves, but rather on the infrastructure to disable the nuclear power plants. However, it would still constitute a strike on a nuclear facility. For such an attack, the Russians could use more than 100 aircraft of various types. Drones will be employed to overload our air defense system, along with cruise and high-speed missiles of the Kinzhal type. It is important to understand one thing here. Any air and missile defense can be breached, no matter how dense it is. Katkov explained on Espresso TV. The expert emphasized that Ukraine's air defense and missile defense systems may not be able to cope with a Russian attack on the nuclear power plant. There is always the question of the number of loaded missiles in air defense systems and the quantity of air defense systems available. Even if we allocate one Patriot system for each of our nuclear power plants, those systems also require cover. Despite all this, due to the number of weapons that the enemy could deploy, air defense and missile defense systems may not be able to shoot down all of these air targets. 
Therefore, there is a high probability that the Russian forces could use 200 to 300 missiles and UAVs to attack Ukrainian nuclear power plants, he added. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky recently said that Russia is planning to attack Ukrainian nuclear power plants and disconnect them from the energy grid. Radiation does not respect state borders, Zelensky said in his address to the United General Assembly in New York. Since Russia can't defeat our people's resistance on the battlefield, Zelensky said Russian President Vladimir Putin is looking for other ways to break the Ukrainian spirit. In his speech, Zelensky recalled the horrifying moment in the first weeks of the war when Russian attacks on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest in Europe, stirred fears among Ukrainians of another Chernobyl-style disaster. No one could know how Russian strikes on the nuclear facility would end, and everyone in Ukraine was reminded of what Chernobyl means, he said.